Hello everyone, Raza here. In this video, we will explore the modern number input control in Power Apps, which is now generally available. We will learn about the features and properties of the number input control and see how we can use it in a modern form control scenario. So let's check this video out in action. The number input modern control in Canvas Power Apps is now generally available. To use modern controls, make sure App Settings, Updates, Modern Controls and Themes are turned on. Let's go and insert the modern number input control. This control is perfect when you want your end users to type in or use these arrow keys to select a number value. The output of this control will always be of type number. So this is a perfect control for numeric scenarios in Power Apps. Let's explore its properties. Value. Value is the initial value of the control before users change it. Basically, the default value of the control. Let's say I put five, the number input control shows five. To change the value, the user can use the arrow keys to move the number up or down, or the user can simply type the value. Minimum, the minimum number the user can input in this control. Let's say I set this value to three. Now, if I start stepping down by using the down arrow key, it won't go below three. If I try to type a number lower than three, it will automatically set it to the minimum value, which is three. Same thing goes if I enter negative numbers, max, the maximum number the user can input. I'll set seven as the max. So now if I start increasing the step value, it won't allow me to go above seven. So it has the min and max boundaries set for this control. If the user tries to enter a number greater than the max value, it will set it to the max value of that control. Precision. How many decimal points to show for the number? I'll set this to two. So up to two decimal places allowed. Let's try it out. If I set three decimal places here, notice it rounds up that number to two decimal places. Step value. What value is added or subtracted from the prior number, meaning the number that is currently set in the control when the user selects the up or down arrows? I have set the step value to two. Preview, up adds the step value two, step down subtracts the step value two. Style and theme, the control is a modern control, so it will follow the modern themes. You can see when I select, it has the primary theme color highlighted right at the bottom. You can change the appearance of the control. I can set the font size, set a border for the control, give it a border color. I can also have a border radius defined. I'll set the width to 75. Here's that same number control. Advanced, on change. Actions performed when the user changes the value of this control. You want to notify the user of the value change. You want to patch the data in your data source. Any action that you want to take on change of this control, you can do it right here. I'll give a notification. To get the value of this control, point to the control. In this case, I'll use the function self dot. To get the value, the property is value. Let's change the number. You see the notification 
right at the top. Since I put this logic on change of the control itself, I use the function self. If you are referring to this control, all you need to do is give the name of this control. I could have also written this as my number input controls name dot value and the behavior will be the same. Validation state has two states, none or error. If I put error, the control border is highlighted in red. Very useful for scenarios to give the end user the visual indicator that the number they have entered is invalid. For this number control, decimal precision, I'll set to two. The decimal numbers can only be 0 0.25, 0 0.5 or 0.75. If they enter anything else, I would like to display it as an error. I'll set the validation state dynamically. If mod is a function, the number value self dot value, divide this by one. So this will give me the remainder. If that is in 0 0.25, 0 0.5 or 0.75, then none, no error, else you give an error. Let's try this out. I'll enter a number 1.25, that's valid. 1.5, valid. Let's try 1.55, invalid. It doesn't match my criteria. So here you can see the validation state puts this red border. So the user gets the visual indicator that the number is not valid. And right at the bottom, I can also show an error message to highlight the valid values that are allowed. Delay output. By default, this is set to false. When this is set to true, the input value is registered after a half second delay. Now this can be very useful for delaying operations that are dependent upon the output of this number value. For example, I'm trying to filter data based upon this number value. If delay output is set to true, in that case, there will be a half second delay, then the query will be performed. Let's add a text control and display the value of this number input control. So my number input controls name dot value. Let's preview. You can see the value is two. Now let me start moving up, down. Until I don't stop for half a second, it won't register the output value. Same thing as I keep typing. Once I type, it registers the value. Let's see how the number input control can be leveraged in the modern form control experience, which is also generally available. Here I have a screen that I have built using an out of the box template, which is called table and form. The data source that I'm using in this scenario is a table in Microsoft Dataverse. You can pick any data source of your choice. Here I'm maintaining project information, the name of the project, the status, estimated cost, this, is a column of type currency. Duration and months, it's a whole number. Team size is also a whole number. In certain data sources, you can also define minimum and maximum values that are allowed. For the modern form control, the data source is that table in Dataverse. What the form control does is it automatically adds the fields or the columns from that table to the form. For number type columns, it will automatically leverage the modern number input control. It's done that for duration and months. It's also done that for team size. If I click on new, it sets the mode of the form to new. It's a number input field. By default, it's set to blank. If you need to set a value to begin with, 
one of the things we can do is for the data card head over to advanced unlock since we'll be making changes the data card has a property default here coalesce meaning pick the first non blank argument this item dot team size that's the value from that column if it's blank then you use zero notice team size to begin with is zero if you want to set the default value as one you can easily do that i'll do the same for duration in months default value i'll set this to 3 to begin with the number input control step value is 1 i can change this if you have a requirement around having decimal values you can set the decimal precision notice min and max values are currently set to blank so i'll create a sample project duration and months in my data source the max limit is 24 let's say i set this to a number that's more than the max limit or i set this to a negative number and i try and submit notice the validation state kicks in now here the user tried to put in a number that was not valid why not stop the user in the first place from entering an invalid value so this number input control min value is set to blank i can set this to 1 as the minimum value and maximum i can set this to 24 when a new item is created see it starts with 3 and it cannot go above 24 and if the user tries to enter invalid values it will automatically reset to the min or max value i was hard coding the min and max values what if i want to get that directly from the data source itself that's also possible by using the function data source info the data source is my connected table in my app called project budgets comma i'm trying to apply the minimum value here so i can pick data source info dot min value enum which columns min value are you trying to validate this against my column name is duration in months and for the max property i'll use a similar formula but use the max value i can do the same thing for team size that's the min value that's the max value team size min value is 0 notice it picks it from the data source max value is 20 if i try and go above 20 it won't allow me so it's respecting the values coming from the data source let's pick an existing project and edit once again all those validations will be respected let's look at estimated cost now this is a currency column in my data source the modern form uses the text input control the user can enter letters and when i enter that it will say the value cannot be converted to a number one of the things we can do is go ahead unlock this data card let's replace this text input control with a number input control i'll select the text input control delete select the data card and go and insert the modern number input control i'll position this right here the name of this control i'll copy notice the data card has a few errors these errors are related to certain properties of the text input control that i deleted my text input controls name was data card value 2 I'll simply replace that with the name of my number input control. The data card's update property. 
Once again, I'll use my number input controls reference and the number input controls value property. I will set as parent dot default. Now this is a currency. So the user can enter decimal values as well. Decimal precision, I'll set it to two. Step value one is pretty low in this case. I'll set it as 5,000. When I select a specific record, I'm editing the record. Here is the current estimated cost that was set. I can go up, down, it's adding, subtracting 5,000. If I want to set the number myself, I can go ahead and easily type that in. This won't allow me to enter any characters apart from numbers. Let's create a new project. Submit. The data is being recorded in my data source. Success. Here is the project. I can edit, make changes, submit. And now the updates will be saved in my data source. If you enjoyed this video, then do like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching.